Of course, Lily can't wait. She has to know immediately whether they could, in fact, be her old worn-out boots. She imagines she'll know by putting them on, and if they are, that she'll somehow sense the taint of her own divine power within them. Lily's nervous and visibly shaking, confusing little Rat, who helps her mistress put them on. At first, she doesn't sense anything, so she decides to kneel and focus her mind solely on the boots. Lily sees a long-haired man, a minstrel, playing a lute, and badly at that. A luthier's apprentice? No. He's a thief, stealing from nobles, even royalty. He's buying a slave girl from slavers with dusky brown skin, brown hair, and brown eyes. She's to be his wife. There's a small village, the black stone statue, a war stallion, in the street. There's a vacant lot, a building, burnt to the ground. The man is building an inn. He's burying treasure under the cellar floor. His wife is pregnant. She dies in childbirth, leaving him with five daughters. His daughters cook, see to the linens, while he plucks at a lute, and still badly at that. Not her old worn-out boots, but what a strange vision. Culled from the boots themselves, a glimpse into the life of their former owner. She has no idea who he was or where he was or is even now if he's still alive. As Lily gathers ingredients for Marek's recipes of the forge, she realizes that this must be some newfound power of hers. She can see and hear visions of a creature's past just given a previous pair of their boots. Amazing. Her already odd relationship with footwear has just become even more bizarre. Of course, Lily doesn't divulge any of this to Little Rat. She won't reveal herself until her reascension. Yes? Is there something you need? All right, Lily telling Sharwin to wait for her here at the mask. Lily wonders about her new power, this ability to scry boots, if you will. Could she sneak into, say, Little Red's brown leather thigh highs and discover secrets of her past? Probably. What a devilish little gift this is. Though dangerous as well. Who knows whose boots she'll find in the future. Lily overhears more news from Rashomon. One of the Hathrens, the ruling witches among the Witcherin, betrayed her sisters in a bid for power. Though the witch was soon after defeated by Tanaran, a half-elven bladesinger, and Marissa, a druid from Cormir who went on to become a spirit of Rashomon. Lily is about to commission a Harbinger Ken greatsword from Marek. Not that she wants a greatsword, but she's hoping it will pay off as a kind of investment, though she's had varying luck with similar investments in the past. 
the thing she has to step in just to make a few coin. Hello there! <laughs> okay, of course, this is the shirtless Smith Marrick. Lily wants to commission a work. All right. Telling her that she needs to place the items required on the forge. If the forge isn't full like now, I can't really do my thing, can I? <laughs> All right. Marek spits and proceeds to tell Lily everything she never wanted to know about adamantine. Adamantite is a hard, jet black ferromagnetic ore. From that, one can make adamant, a glossy black pure metal, but it's brittle. Although an adamant sword could slice through most metals, it could easily snap. Hello there! <laughs> Alright, taking a look. Ah, there's real potential here. Your adamantite and your magic greatsword will make a harbinger kin greatsword. Alright. But this job isn't cheap. It'll cost you 500 gold pieces for me to make this for you. Payment in advance, of course. <laughs> oh, she's only doing this as a investment. I think she's going to sell it probably immediately <laughs> afterwards. Or right, pay him the 500 coin. <laughs> well, that was quick. Always a pleasure doing business with a fine woman such as yourself. So, he didn't do it yet. Stand back. You don't want to catch a hammer on the head. Oh, now he's done. <laughs> there you go, madam. Quick as you please, and the job is done. Saying so she can pick up the item off the forge. Lily's Harbinger Ken Greatsword is finally finished. Though, he put the wrong year under his mark. No matter. Another spit, and the lesson continues. From adamant, one makes adamantine. It's a black alloy. 5 eighths adamant, 2 eighths silver, and 1 eighth electrum itself a natural alloy of silver and gold. There are legends that one can make adamantine from just steel and mithril, but the process is as elusive as the Philosopher's Stone. Lily doesn't even thank her tutor for the lesson as she hastens out the door. Lily can only hope that Marek the Hammer will put some of that 500 coins she just gave him towards buying a shirt before her next visit. Hello? All right, Lily, turn around to sell this Harbinger Kin Greatsword <laughs> to Durga. Not bad at all. Over 2,000 coin profit in a matter of mere hours. In that case, She'll likely be returning to commission other items as well, like the Golden Sickle. I just wanted to add to Marek's discussion regarding adamantine. Not only is it one of the strongest alloys in the realms, harder than mithril or steel, but it confers natural enhancement bonuses to both weapons and armor. Animantine weapons can range up to a plus two natural enhancement to both attack and damage, and adamantine armor can range up to a plus three natural enhancement to armor class, or just plus one for adamantine shields. Adamantine arms and armor are also treated as masterwork items. Many starred cloak mages guild. Lily can finally afford to purchase the remaining third level spells the guild had to offer. Thanks to Lord Androd Golden. Welcome, member. What do you require? Alright, Lily, trading with Altura. Namely, protection from elements and slow. And actually, while Lily's training for and learning these new spells, I also wanted to remark about spellcasters and rest. 
Some people might think that Lily rememorizes all her spells during her trance while resting. This actually isn't necessarily true. A wizard can memorize every spell they're capable of memorizing in a single hour. And they're free to divide that hour any way they please throughout the day. So, for example, Lily could spend 20 minutes memorizing a third in the morning, another 20 minutes memorizing a second third in the afternoon, and yet another 20 minutes memorizing the final third in the evening. The rule is simply that any spell cast in the last eight hours counts against her daily limit, even though she only needs four hours of trance. So, for example, if she relaxed here at the guild for, let's say, three hours, and then cast Eagle Splendor and traded for an hour with El Tora, and then spent four hours in trance, she still wouldn't be able to prepare Eagle Splendor until another four hours had passed. But, <laughs> Yeah, that can get complicated, so here it's simplified, and she simply rememorizes everything on rest. Her spells purchased, learned, and prepared, Inspector General Black is finally ready to carry her investigation into the beggar's nest. Bodynock was there, as was Grimno, but so was Lily and she saw all the undead. It's time to hire Lino Lenero, elven cleric of Sayani Mumbo. Sure, one of the water Davian creatures might be loose in the district. Lily will ask around. But more importantly, the owner of the Lady Don't Care in Black Lake needs to ensure that her business will be a success. And at the moment, that success hangs on the exclusivity of its menu. In particular, Hot Bites. She'll not risk fair competition with the Shining Serpent Inn. Success at any cost.